What's up everyone, my name is Suleiman and today I'm going to be talking about the new tax proposal that President Joe Biden unveiled in his speech last night. I'm going to be going over all the details like who's going to be getting taxed, what the new tax rates are going to be looking like, and we're also going to be going a little bit over the American Families Plan and what's included in that. So let's get right into it. So the new tax hikes proposed by President Joe Biden is supposed to cover the cost of the American Families Plan, which is expected to cost around $2 trillion. So like I talked about in my previous video, there's funding is going to be provided for education, child care, and possibly the $1,400 stimulus check. Now before you start worrying about your taxes starting to increase, you need to figure out if you are going to be affected. Now there's a very slim chance that you will be, because this tax increase is supposed to be on the wealthy, and in corporate income tax is also expected to increase. So now let's get right into the details of what are the percentages. So corporate income tax, if you remember, President Trump previously reduced it to 20% for all corporations. And President Joe Biden's proposal is to increase that to 28%. Now the income taxes is supposed to be affecting people who are making over a million dollars a year. So currently the highest tax income bracket is tax 37 percent and the new tax proposal president joe biden wants to increase that to 39.6 percent and it also includes a obamacare surcharge which is supposed to add on another four to five percent so if you're living in states like california and new york and you're making over a million dollars you can be taxed up to 50 percent per year now let's talk about what i think is the most important new tax proposal by the democrats which is the capital gains tax rate they want to increase that from the current 20 percent all the way up to 39.6 percent that is just basically doubling the current taxes so let's talk about the implications of this and what could possibly happen so again this is mostly going to be affecting the wealthy who are supposed to be making over a million dollars a year but the truth is like i've said many times before the wealthy do not pay any taxes or they pay very little because they have a lot of strategies they you run their money through corporations and they can basically have tons of write-offs and they also have many other strategies where they wouldn't be paying this 40 percent tax capital gains tax so let's talk about the different strategies that would be happening so first of all they would not be selling more than a million dollars i would assume one strategy that these high income earners can do is actually sell all their investments or some of their investments before this new tax income takes into effect. So if you have stocks or you have real estate, which is also could be affected, you could start selling that before the tax capital gains tax becomes into effect. So you would only be paying 20% instead of the new 40% proposal. The thing is, instead of actually selling your investments, they probably wouldn't sell them at all or they would be selling them slowly over time. So using all these different strategies, it's going to be very highly unlikely that there's going to be more revenue coming in from the wealthy. And according to a research done by Wharton, they actually estimated that this will bring in about a trillion dollars in revenue over the next decade, while Joe Biden's crew estimated that it's going to be bringing in $1.5 trillion. So how will that difference come into play? Well, again, like I said, the wealthy are going to use all these different strategies to avoid paying higher taxes and they're probably not going to end up paying as much as they expected. Another very important tax loophole that this new tax proposal is going to kill is the 1031 exchange. Now, if you ever heard about this strategy used in real estate, it's very effective. It avoids paying uh, capital gains on real estate uh, sales. So basically, when you sell your real estate property, you would have to end up paying taxes. But you can use a 1031 exchange where you actually roll the proceeds of the real estate sale into another property. So you avoid paying the real estate taxes at that moment. But eventually you do end up paying it if you were to sell it at one point. But this actually snowballs into bringing in more profits over the long term. And that is one real estate strategy that is going to be basically ended if this new tax proposal goes into effect. And I think it was a very useful strategy that I was hoping myself to use one day. Now let's talk about the effects of these tax proposals on the stock market. So like I've said before, the wealthy will probably start selling off some of their stocks or real estate or whatever investments they have before the new tax uh, increase takes into effect. So what would happen if they would start to sell off? 
all of their stocks and their you know, other investments. Obviously, the stock market would come down. That's why when the news actually came out for this new proposal initially, I think it was a uh, Monday, the stock market actually started decreasing. Now, if you were to look at history and the last time the capital gains tax rate was increased, it happened in 2013, the percentage increased from 15% to 20%. The market actually sold off over the next six months and the wealthiest sold their investments, 1% uh, of their equity assets. So we can see what has happened before the capital gains tax rate has increased, which is only from 15 to 20%. Now the new tax proposal is going from 20 to almost 40%. That's double. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with the stock market coming on into this future. Now let's talk about the education section of the American Families Plan. There's actually a lot of good stuff in there when I read it on the White House page. So they're actually proposing to increase the Pell Grants, which is funding for college students up to $1,400, which is actually really useful because I actually use that myself and it actually helped me pay for college. So families or students can get $1,400 extra from the previous Pell Grants so they can pay towards college tuition and school supplies or whatever. Another really useful thing that they actually added in there is free community college for two to four years. So for low income families, they're gonna be providing free community college, which I think is very good. This could increase the retention rate. This can increase education rate and overall long term is very good for the American economy. Another thing included in the plan is free preschool for kids up to three to four years old. And this is supposed to estimate that it's going to save low income families of up to $13,000 a year. All right, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, make sure to hit the like down below. Subscribe to this channel because I'm going to bring in content like this to you all the time. And comment down below if you have any questions.